Hello everybody, I bring greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me great joy to uh, meet you through this video. It is our first video in the year 2020, so I'm very happy that the Lord enabled us to do this. Um, I've been thinking for many days, in fact many weeks, as to what should we record as the first video for this year. So I had many ideas and many thoughts. However, when I sat down this week and uh, this evening actually and started to jot down my thoughts, the precious Holy Spirit interrupted me and gave me something um, new and fresh uh, because I had not prepared to speak that with you. And I believe it is a very critical topic. I want to talk to you about spiritual sight. To be more specific, I want to talk to you about are your spiritual eyes open? Now Apostle Paul said in the letter to Galatians that I went up by revelation. What he is saying is that his elevation in life was connected to the revelation he had. His movement in life, his his, the quality of his life, the quality of the spirituality he had, the quality of his ministry was greatly impacted by the revelation he carried and he was taken up because of that revelation. Now you must understand that revelation comes because one a person has spiritual sight or spiritual insight. It's very important that we establish this. We also need to first and foremost study the scriptures and verify if spiritual sight or spiritual eyes or eyes of understanding are in fact biblical. If we don't establish that first, then there's no point discussing this. So I'm going to share a few scriptures with you that will first and foremost establish the concept of spiritual sight. And then, I, if the Lord allows me, share one or two keys as to how the Lord can open our eyes. So it's very, very important that we understand this subject. Because if we don't have a good and a clear understanding on the topic, it's very easy to miss our way and go in a direction that is not healthy and that is not legal. So to let's to start this discussion, I would want to share some scriptures with you. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. I will read for you and maybe we'll put it up on the screen so that you can also read this with us. Um, we are in a conversation in Genesis chapter 3. We read a conversation between the serpent and Eve who was the first woman. And the serpent is trying to tempt Eve to disobey God by eating the fruit that God had forbidden, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he's in a conversation with Eve and, and here's one of the statements he's making. I'll read for you. This is Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of the tree, your eyes shall be opened. And you shall be like gods. Now, what eyes is he talking about? It is obviously clear that, that Adam and Eve had eyes. Because of them, he were, they were able to interact with the garden. They were able to see the trees and the fruits and the rivers and the fish and each other. But yet we see here that serpent is saying, your eyes must be open. Your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be like gods. And if we read verse 7, it says that after she had eaten the fruit, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked. Now this is such a fascinating detail. I don't know if you have ever read this particular passage of scripture and paused and thought about it. Now, first the serpent says that your eyes will be open, but they already had eyes. 
and their eyes were fully functional, what eyes is he talking about? Then in verse 7 we read that their eyes were opened when they disobeyed God and ate of the fruit and they realized they were naked. Isn't it fascinating that just a few minutes ago they had fully functional eyes but they never realized that they didn't have clothes. And then here we read and we see that as soon as they disobeyed God, a certain realm was open to them. A certain spiritual sight and understanding was open to them and they became aware of their nakedness. But a few minutes ago, although they didn't have clothes on, they were not aware that they were not naked. Now, of course, some will say that they were covered in the glory of God and that is possible and that they were so clothed in the glory of God that they didn't see their nakedness and when they sinned that glory lifted but you must understand that but there had to be two different ways of seeing life of seeing their environment that had brought a change this is not the only incident where we see in scripture where a character is talking about spiritual sight. I want to read one more verse for you so we can further establish that there is sight beyond our natural eyes. Um, I'll read for you a psalm of uh, David. We are in 119 verse 18. Here David is praying to the Lord and he says, Lord, open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things in your law. This is uh, very interesting. This is King David, right? Now, King David was a, was a very anointed, was a very spiritual man. And yet he is saying, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in the law. So we must deduce from that scripture that there is an eye that he is perceived is closed, is shut. And there are things in the scripture that are wonderful that he cannot see. Now, it is obvious that he is not talking about his natural eye because he had a very functional 2020 vision probably and that's why he could go into all these battles and win and he was probably great at different forms of uh, war. But he, it is established that he had good eyesight and yet we see David praying here, open my eyes that I may behold, that I may see wonderful things. You must ask the question, what is he talking about? And now let's go. I would, let me give you another scripture reference. We are now in 2 Kings chapter, chapter 6 verse 17. This is a conversation between Elisha and his servant. And, and what had happened was that a particular king had come to attack Elisha and his servant. And Elisha's servant was very afraid. And he was so afraid, he looks to his master and he's like, he was basically being very nervous. And Elisha says, why are you afraid? For those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. And, and Elisha's servant being confused because he just saw the two of them and, and, and he was very confused. He's like, what is this old man saying? Because I just see the two of us, but, but there's an army out there. And that's when Elisha prayed this very powerful prayer. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 17 and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And this is yet another example of something beyond the natural sight being opened to a man and then suddenly they are aware of another reality. Beloved, I want you to pay attention. We are talking biblical stuff now. For too long, the enemy has robbed the church of Jesus Christ of supernatural sight. We, anytime we talk about the supernatural, the church becomes very anxious, the church becomes very doubtful, very finicky, because they have heard of these terminologies 
in other cults, they have heard it in, uh, in the New Age movement, in other religions. What you must understand is that just because there are other groups of people that are manipulating these realities, it does not mean that God is not the author and the originator of this grace. Because we were made in the image of God, we are sons of God and, and there are aspects of our being that, that we have not fully realized. Now just because we see other, other groups of people manipulating and using these things, we must not rubbish the whole thing and say this is demonic. I am reading to you scriptures that are inspired by the Holy Spirit that we accept as the canon of God's word. And in the scripture we are saying again and again and again, his people praying to God for their eyes for their spiritual lives to be open. So it must be established that what we are discussing right now is biblical. This is not imaginations of our mind. These are not practices of heathen religions. This is in fact the God of the Bible and this is biblical, biblical what we are discussing. Let me give you one more verse. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And this is Apostle Paul, this is in the New Testament. This is after Jesus Christ had come, died on the cross and rose again and ascended to heaven. The church of Jesus Christ had been born and, and many, many churches had been planted. And now Apostle Paul is writing to one of the churches and he says, and this is his prayer for the church in Ephesus. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. His prayer is that the eyes of your understanding, let it be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Now this is, this is interesting. Apostle Paul is praying not for an individual now, but he's praying for a collective uh, body. He's praying to the church. He's praying to. Uh, he's praying for uh, the group of believers, and he's saying. You need the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened that you may comprehend this hope that you have. Now, we have read verses right from Genesis to Ephesians, at least four different accounts of people praying for spiritual sight. So let's, let me break this down for you. There are two kinds of sight. One is our natural sight. The sight that we use to interact with this world, where we, uh, we see uh, trees and buildings and people and cars and trees and animals, that is our natural sight. And that natural sight gives us ability to interact with this world. Now this natural sight is also kind of shapes our perception of life how we see people move, how we see people do things, it kind of shapes our perception of things and experiences and people. But I think it is safe for us to establish and, 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 and deduce and declare that there is another sight. And this is spiritual sight. This is the sight of your heart. This is the sight of our understanding. These are our spiritual eyes. And now that is another world altogether. That is a different reality altogether. And if we can learn how to access spiritual sight that the Holy Spirit will give, not any other spirit, not any other realm, but the, but the Holy Spirit of God. If we can learn how to see with the eyes of God, if we can learn how to see with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, and if we can see through Christ our Savior, I believe our world will look very different. So we, let, let, let's establish it. There is the natural sight and there is the spiritual sight. And they are different. That Here's key number one. There, is, there are few disciplines that are as powerful as fasting and prayer. A man of God that has spiritual insight, a man who is spiritual or a woman who is spiritual and who have had the eyes of their understanding open are often men and women 
of deep prayer and not prayer that is religious or striving but prayer that is the result of deep communion with God. So I, I, I ask you to make fasting and prayer a part of your lifestyle. It is very important that you develop a lifestyle of communicating with God, deeply hungering for God. When I say prayer and fasting, I do not mean this boring, um, ritualistic petition, praying unto God. No. What I am referring to is fellowship. What I am referring to, you, referring to is consecration unto God's presence, consecration unto His, um, His, His, His will and His word, and leaning onto the bosom of Jesus. So the more you can press in and become aware of His presence by fasting and prayer, you will see that your spiritual senses will open up to the realities of Christ. It is very important. I can give you scripture after scripture after scripture how when men and women give themselves to prayer and fasting, the spiritual realm opens to them. Daniel is a great example. If you have not read the book of Daniel, you should. He gave himself to a Daniel's fast where he fasted and prayed for 21 days and during the course of that 21 day fast, his eyes are open and he begins to see realities that he had not seen before. You will read in the book of Acts that the church was praying and fasting and the Holy Spirit spoke to the church to consecrate Apostle Paul and um, I think Barnabas it is, if I remember correctly. I, I, a fresh direction came. They heard an instruction. They heard the voice of God. Their spiritual eyes were opened to a dimension where they saw the work Apostle Paul was going to do. And you will see many, many different examples. It's very important that you understand that. A prophet of God is a man or a woman that is consecrated to the presence of God. A prophet has a fasted lifestyle. Key number two. We read in Genesis that an act of disobedience opened the eyes of Eve and Adam in a carnal way. They, they had eyes that were sensitive to God. They had eyes that were sensitive to the realms of glory. But they were never, those eyes could never see the nakedness of man. But an act of disobedience opened another set of eyes which are carnal and they saw their nakedness. Now, now this is powerful, isn't it? So if, if an act of disobedience can unlock something, then an act of obedience can also unlock something good for us. So we must study scripture intelligently and, and study the people of God and study the people that God used mightily and communicated mightily and see what was the lifestyle of these great men and women of God in the Bible that I can imitate in my life today because by imitating their faith, by imitating their lifestyle, we will unlock certain graces in our life. So we may also have spiritual experiences that glorify Christ and that can benefit mankind. Remember this, acts of worship, acts of prayer, acts of sacrificial giving, these are all acts of obedience that can unlock grace over our life. That's a very powerful key. Um, it probably deserves a video by itself, but we will not go uh, any more into that point. But please remember, if an act of disobedience opens something, then an act of obedience can unlock grace over your life. And the last thing uh, that I want to share with you, our spiritual eyes can be opened 
when we submit to our pastors and leaders. Not everything we have to work and strive for. By coming in alignment, certain graces are open to our lives. I tell all our sons and daughters in faith that there are certain graces that you are partakers of that is just an automatic deposit and deployed in your life and your heart because of your alignment. If you really submit to your pastors and your leaders and you will see that the same grace that is on your pastor, on your leader will flow into your life too because you have submitted and honored them. Elisha, in one moment, I, I find it so fascinating. It is, it is breathtaking, breathtaking, breathtaking. Gehazi had, had served Elisha for so long he had journeyed with his master so long and yet never had his spiritual eyes open, which means physical proximity is not the qualification, but it is important. He had served his master, he had served the man of God, he had served the prophet, yet no spiritual insight. And in his frustration, he told, he cried out in his anxiety to his master, to his prophet, to his man of God. And the man of God prayed, Lord, open his eyes. And in one moment, oh my God, that is so powerful. In one moment, his eyes are opened and he begins to see realms of angels. He begins to see, see another world altogether. Now that is the grace of submission and alignment. You don't have to spend 40, 50 years getting to that place. By grace and by favor, certain things can be unlocked for you. Of course, we must understand that it is the Holy Spirit that grants spiritual sight. It is the Holy Spirit that brings revelation. It is the Holy Spirit that gives understanding. To achieve this, with human strength to achieve this with just human intellect would be to manipulate and insult the grace of God. We should not do that. We must lean only on the precious Holy Spirit and he's the one that gives insight. I hope this video is helping you because these are very powerful keys. I'll close with the last one. Now, just because we have spiritual eyes, it doesn't mean we can see. We have established that there are two kinds of sight, natural and spiritual. But just like in the natural, we need light to see. I hope you're catching what I'm saying. I have fully functional eyes, you have fully functional eyes. But if there is no light in this room, I cannot see. So I need a, another medium, I, I need something called light for things to become visible. It is the same in the realms of the spirit. In the realms of the spirit, what brings light is the word of God. What opens our eyes of understanding and what gives us sight is the word of God. Um, David said, the entrance of God's word brings light. So when we meditate on the scriptures and we have a lifestyle of studying the word, you will see that when the word of God begins to speak to us, suddenly our heart has perception, our heart has meaning, our heart is able to see into places that we didn't know before. That's why the Bible is alive. It's a living word, it is a living truth, which means when it walks into your life, it brings understanding. This is very powerful, uh, people of God. Make sure you have a growing, healthy relationship with the word of God. Because the word of God will bring you understanding. The word of God will bring you spiritual sight. The word of God will open your eyes. The word of God will give you spiritual eyes light. I hope, I hope you have received these words into your heart. I want to quickly pray for you. So this, 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 is, uh, this can be a moment of impartation. 
So I'm going to quickly pray for you and will you join me in this prayer? Father God, I want to thank you for your people that are listening. And I pray for grace to be released on their life to have their spiritual eyes open, the eyes of their understanding open. So their life, their heart, their mind, their soul and their spirit will be in complete submission and alignment to Christ Jesus. As I pray God, let grace be released. Let there be a love for your presence. Let there be a love for your word. And let them be people of great honor. I bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. If this has blessed you, I highly encourage you to uh, leave a comment and share it with somebody that will appreciate it. God bless you. I will see you in the next video.